Let me bring in Republican Senator Roger Wicker from Mississippi, joining us now exclusively before the vote. Uh, sir, you got to run in there and vote. When do you expect the actual uh, voting to begin? Uh, I don't know, but if you need to break away at any point to hear Mitch McConnell, I certainly wouldn't blame you. But really, <laughs> we expected this vote about two hours ago, okay. and I guess it takes a little longer to uh, to write the paperwork yeah, up. Yeah, because we thought but it's we thought all good. The government is going to reopen, and uh, this d didn't turn out to be uh, a 16-day uh, marathon like it did. Well, something um, something woke the Democrats up who realized, and I'm sure many Republicans knew this already, that a government shutdown was not in the best political interests of anyone. Let's put the political talking points aside and tell okay. me what brought this finally to, to a yes vote. I really I think public opinion and I, I think our, our Democratic friends realize that it really didn't make sense to shut the government down, to refuse to fund the government for three or four weeks over something that uh, can can be tended to between now and the first week of March. It, it just it didn't add up and the more people understood that this was about that one issue of uh, immigration reform mm -hmm. that could still be tended to and there was really no reason to have a shutdown over that. Well about so, as DACA, as that let me jump out, in here, um, about DACA, got into um, Washington. As, as we understand it, February 8th, when this continuing resolution finally comes to an end, that uh, Leader McConnell uh, has said that there will be a deal and a vote on DACA and that was encouraging to the Democrats enough so that Chris Coons of Delaware said that, you know, that's why most of us got on board. Will there be a DACA vote by February 8th? Well, I hope uh, even more than that, I hope we have a DACA deal uh, within a week or two. Uh, and, and if we can wow. do that and we can can uh, put it before the Congress, uh, then we can have that at least uh, cleared this by the Senate uh, well before this February 8th day. We, we were always working on DACA. There's some other things that have to be attached to it, like border security and this end to chain migration. We're not just going to do the one thing about uh, the childhood arrivals, but we think we can do this, and we were working on it, and uh, and we've got time to do it. So uh, maybe the time has has been shortened a bit, and mm -hmm. uh, if our Democratic friends want to claim that as a victory, then uh, I'm happy for them. I'm also just happy that this government shutdown didn't last very long. Senator, more than 2,800 Mississippians are living under uh, the DACA deal, at least not a deal, but uh, you've got them in DACA status. Do you speak to them? What is your position on them? Well, my, my position is that they came here through no fault of their own when they were three or four years old and uh, their parents brought them. Uh, it was technically illegal, but uh, this is the only home they know and we need a solution. The, I will reiterate what I just said. We need to attach some other issues to that so that we don't have another wave in the, in the next generation of DACA recipients. So uh, we, we need to present, prevent this sort of thing from happening in the future. And that's why the border security and the chain migration and, and the uh, diversity lottery need to be tended to also. Do you think that this will get to the president's desk by early this evening, as the White House has said? I think reopening the government will get to the president's desk. Yes, I think we'll be open uh, early evening. And then I think uh, I think a DACA fix and also uh, some legislation and some some agreement on uh, getting higher defense spending, better security spending and, and different numbers for our appropriators to work with. Also, we'll get to the president's desk. <laughs> Uh, in, in a few days or a few weeks. And, and so if, if this, if this uh, built a fire under members of the House and Senate to, to get our spending bills done, then, uh, then more power uh, to them. Yeah, um, and, and Senator Cornyn is, is still speaking at this moment, uh, and there will be that preamble before the vote at any moment. And we do expect, I just want to let our viewers know that Senator McConnell, we're told, will be speaking. Um, in the end, we're dying to know what happens with infrastructure. As a business network, we've been watching the material stocks, the big industrial names. There's a lot of anticipation built into that. Is that the next thing that you hope comes to the Senate floor? It's probably the next big thing. And, and definitely, I want to be a part of a, of a major infrastructure bill that's going to involve a federal and, and state and local contribution. Yes, it's important. Uh, it's important for uh, for this country. It's important for the economy. I want to be part of it. Uh, I'm on the um, 
Environment and Public Works Committee and we'll have primary jurisdiction over that as well as the Commerce Committee. And I, I'm anxious to roll my sleeves up and work with the administration on infrastructure. Do you expect, because right now there isn't a clear cut yes as to whether the federal workers who had been furloughed for these past three days would get back pay. They're arguing about that right now on the floor as we understand it. Um, would you vote to give them the back pay for the three days that they have not been the, working? The, they always have before and, and uh, I, th I think we should follow that precedent. I really don't think this is going to be much of an issue. All right. Okay. Hey, Senator, thank you very much. You I know bet. you've got to skedaddle back in there, so thank well, you very much. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> Anytime. Senator Roger Wicker, closing bell. We're now about 18 minutes away from the closing bell. Now we're up 84 points.